right now, if you are law enforcement or work for an agency in any capacity, right now you can actually do something. All of you that say, I'm a cop and I support the Second Amendment, now is your time to take action in a way that will be politically acceptable by your higher ups. And I'm saying this because in the past, this exact action was politically acceptable. If you are not law enforcement in any capacity, write to your local county sheriffs about this issue that we're going to be talking about today. And if you want to challenge it when this, when this law that would ban concealed carry in the state of California pretty much entirely, and I'll talk more about that in a second, this law that is going to be passing in the state of California, if you want to challenge that after it passes, after it passes, donate to the California Rifle and Pistol Association. When this bill was going through in the past and missed out by one vote because of some mistakes made by the California legislator, they were ready. They had a lawsuit ready and going, and uh, I will be a part of it when that time comes, when SB2 passes. So today, we are talking about the revival of the SB918 in the form of SB2 in the state of California. What this bill will do is essentially make every single business and most of the sidewalks and most public property, and I'm saying most, what I really mean is like 99% of public property, it would make it impossible for you to legally carry a firearm. In some instances, it would actually make it impossible to drive through certain areas confidently. Now, if you don't know the contents of every single business in every single building in every single city and state, you're going to have to just generally assume that you can either accept that you would be breaking the law or not carry your firearm anywhere. SB2 is essentially with some minor changes and it's hard to comment this early on into the process as revisions and drafts can happen, but SB2 creates a list as well as doing many other things, creates a list of locations which includes the parking lots, the sidewalks, and the entire property of almost every single type of building. If you want to see my video discussing how this actually plays out in practicality, go ahead and watch my SB918 video, and in the future, once this bill is a little bit more fleshed out and we kind of know what it's going to look like as it goes through, Watch that video because I go into a city and kind of show you, hey, here's a map. Here's some places that I would commonly go that I can't, that are just normal places for you to be in public, but I can't because of certain businesses that might share the same property or be inside that building as well. Or maybe I don't know the contents of every single building, of every single office space in every single 10-story building. So because of that, this law would make concealed carry of a firearm anywhere outside of your house illegal. And when transporting it from your house, let's say to a gun store or to your buddy's house, somewhere where you could have a gun, you would potentially usually have to, if you wanted to play it safe and follow the law, carry that gun unloaded in a locked container, which defeats the purpose of getting the now eight soon to be when this bill passes 16 hours of required training. So this bill does a lot of things that make it significantly more difficult as well as increase fees and cost and time to actually get a concealed carry weapons permit in the state of California. A lot of you might be saying, Reno, it sounds like you're against getting training. No, absolutely not. But here's the deal. I worked in a gun store for many years. During that period of time, I got to experience a lot of different types of uh, people who wanted guns for a variety of reasons. Not all of them look like me. Ugly. I'm kidding. I, I am ugly. But what I mean by that is not every gun owner that I interacted with or potential or soon to be gun owner was just a straight white tall dude that wanted to have more guns. I sold guns to a lot of people who were single mothers or smaller statured people, people who are having to deal with active, real threats because the police cannot, or even in some instances, told that victim that they could not do anything except respond after something is happening. Being able to get a concealed carry permit and being able to just legally carry a gun 
is something that for many who truly have the immediate urgent need, which is a lot of people, isn't something that you can risk taking months and months and months or potentially even years as we are seeing now. Some counties have yet to issue their first or just recently issued their first concealed carry weapons permit like San Francisco just recently made the news for issuing their first permit in over a decade. Now we're closing in on, I think, almost a year since the Bruin decision. Might even be longer than that. I, don't, I can't even remember specifically, but it's been a long time since Bruin. And since then, some counties are still barely getting around to issuing concealed carry permits. I had to have the uncomfortable conversation with a lot of people who were dealing with active threats that the police said that they could do nothing about or would do nothing about. I don't want those people to have to experience the hardships that come from not having a firearm when they need it. And that's why I'm against all these requirements that are simply put in place to increase the cost, increase the time, increase the overall burden of having a legal means to protect yourself. I think everybody that does carry a gun or owns a gun or has a gun in the home at all should get training. I think everybody that lives in the home with a firearm should understand how to use it or at the very least understand how to unload it and handle it safely. I think that kind of training would be cool if there was some sort of incentive or a cheaper way to do so. The way the state is doing this is if the required training goes from 8 to 16 hours, that's now one day now to two days, most ranges that can host a CCW type course usually are so full and backed up that you have to place a you have to place a request to have the range time. So the instructors have to get that range time in a year in advance, meaning that from the today's date, a year out from the time that they would be able to get a additional day, this is going to increase the time that it takes to do it. It's gonna increase the cost to pay the instructors and it's gonna increase the time that you potentially have to take out of work in order to get a CCW, a process that in many counties is currently taking over a year. That is a pretty big burden on someone's right to keep and bear arms. Now, if you aren't a cop, donate to the CRPA because they will be filing a lawsuit. They have one ready to go. They're just gonna make some slight changes to the wording when this passes. Now, I, see, I keep saying when and not if, and I'm very clear about that, because I watched a press conference today with Gavin Newsom and Rob Bonta, as well as some other gun grabbers, and now I wanted to point out a few key things that he mentioned. In a lot of these talks, you will hear gun grabbers mention that California has lower gun deaths than other states, and they compare it to states like Texas or states that have constitutional carry. And it's great. I'm not saying that less people dying is good, but what they're conflating is suicide numbers to the risk associated with someone legally possessing a firearm in public. Those states with constitutional carry that also happen to have higher gun deaths, it's almost entirely skewed by the amount of people in those states that kill themselves. Suicides are in no way <laughs> related to legal, lawful, and morally just concealed carry as a private citizen. But they're gonna conflate the two anyway. Gavin Newsom specifically called out Judge Benitez and mentioned that he is going to be overturning some laws in the future, which is interesting because yes, Judge Benitez will be doing that in the very near future. And when that information does come out and something happens, I'll make a video on it. Feel free to turn on likes, subscriptions, all that kind of stuff. Watch me on other platforms as well if YouTube decides to nuke me off this one in the next week or two or a few weeks. He also claimed that without passing SB2, which would essentially ban concealed carry, that cops would die. He made the claims that concealed carry, <laughs> licensed lawful concealed carry, because that's what we're talking about here, would lead to more cops dying. I don't know where he's getting his numbers from, but I'm not exactly aware of an epidemic of licensed concealed carry holders killing cops. And we also have to consider, and this is where I talked about earlier, we're touching back on the thing of if you're a cop or if you work in law enforcement in any capacity, here's what you can do. 
When SB 918 initially was making its rounds and was going to pass, it was going to pass. The only reason it didn't is because they needed a two thirds vote, not a simple majority because it had an urgency clause. This time they're introducing it without the urgency clause, which means they only need a 50% vote, which they had last time. Unions that represent police groups, police interest groups, wrote letters to the legislature saying, do not pass this. The police unions actually opposed gun control for the first time in my adult life that I'm actually aware of. I'm aware of many law enforcement groups or specific counties in this state that might have said something similar in the past, but as a whole, generally police unions and groups opposed SB 918. We absolutely need them to oppose SB two. If you are a law enforcement officer, if you work for a police department in any capacity, tell your higher ups about SB two, how it's going to increase the cost and burden of you trying to process these applications, how it's going to increase confusion and how it's going to lead people to having to choose to illegally carry a firearm if they want to have the means to protect themselves. Now, two scenarios, two near identical scenarios. Let's say person, not, not me, not me, person carrying a gun with a concealed carry weapons permit without SB2 being enacted. I'm walking down the street somewhere that I can legally be. I'm not going into any bars to drink. I'm not going into a post office. I'm not going anywhere else that would be generally currently prohibited. I'm walking down the street. Cop stops me for some reason. Maybe they said, hey, some ugly uh, white dude was walking down the street, looks suspicious. We get to talking. It all goes fine because I'm not breaking any laws. I'm not nervous. Nothing's going on. SB2 passes, same person, not me, again, not me. This person is walking down the street with a license to conceal carry a firearm. However, because SB2 passes, the sidewalk that they're currently on, I can't actually be, or this person cannot actually be, because down the street, there happens to be a chiropractor's office or an eye doctor, but it's still on the same sidewalk, still in the same technical building area. That's considered the property. I am now breaking the law and a police officer wants to interact with me. Which one of those two scenarios do you think leads to a more comfortable and safe interaction with law enforcement? Go ahead and let me know. I don't know. Maybe you can actually put your money where your, I was going to curse, mouth is and actually oppose gun control aside from just leaving YouTube comments saying, I'm a cop and I support the second amendment. I would never enforce these laws. Okay. Now is your time to go one step further and publicly oppose them to your higher ups, something that was politically safe to do back then and should be politically safe to do right now. And if it's not, maybe you need to do a reassessment on whether or not what you're doing is actually for the people or against the people. When SB 918 initially got brought out, I was going to be a plaintiff in the lawsuit against that. The CRPA was ready to file a lawsuit because it looked like it was going to pass. They needed a two thirds vote and I believe they only missed by one, maybe two votes. I think it changed kind of like in the middle of the night, one person ended up redacting their vote. It was something like that. It was looking like it was going to pass, but then one person early on in the night was like, I'm not doing it. They're trying to sway his vote. And then one other person, I think changed their mind, something like that. But basically they missed the two thirds vote by two votes which is still plenty over the 50% simple majority that they will need this time, assuming they don't add an urgency clause. The most interesting thing about this press conference from the parts that I watched was when Gavin Newsom discussed the rights to conceal carry a firearm, he laughed exactly like I did and used rights in air quotes. I don't know what the part of bearing arms seems to imply that it doesn't cover the carrying of arms as the right, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, keep, have, okay, have, have them bear, carry. Where is the confusion that it is a, not a right to him? Let me know what you guys think down below. You guys know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.